coming back and looking at, at the film, uh, it was uh, uh, not a very good performance in the first half as far as statistic-wise. Didn't I think we tackled very well on defense, couldn't really move the ball on offense. Same thing we talked about on Saturday night. Um, but we were able to get turnovers, um, get the touchdown uh, on the interception from Siegel, get the explosive play from Avery to Jay Jack, and that gave us some life. And then two two plays really, in my opinion, helped um, solidify or give us the chance to, to be successful. One is obviously the fourth down stop um, that we had at the end of the first half. And then the other one was um, uh, I think we had a fourth and six or fourth and seven on the first drive of that second half <clears throat> where we decided to go for it um, just a little bit out of field goal range and didn't want to punt. And uh, Avery did a great job making a, a rusher miss and, and Ty Bo who's playing really well for us and happy for Ty, makes a big catch and gets the first down. And then we scored on that drive and um, uh, ended up playing really, really good football in the second half. And I told the guys after the game, what we've done the last two weeks is really impressive to go on the road two different time zones at night, get back as late as we get back, um, trying to take care of the guys uh, with some of our scheduling that we've adjusted. But um, to go on the road at Colorado, at West Virginia, and find ways to get uh, – Two big wins uh, in in different ways that we did it um, uh, was really impressive and and hopefully we can build off of that now uh, this week we we fortunately get to play at home um, another night game gives us an opportunity to get our bodies back and get our minds uh, fresh um, with the extra time we have on Friday and Saturday and we're going to need that extra time on Friday and Saturday um, they do a lot of different things uh, as they always have especially offensively. They're, they're really creative in what they do offensively with shift trade motions. Um, they've got a lot of talented guys on both sides of the ball. And so we've got to come up with really good plans and then spend some time and, and execute it and make sure that uh, uh, we know our assignments and, and can play fast. Jay, you got the typical 2-5 and five team. What's the trick to getting guys to buy into that? Well, I think it's because it's KUK State. I mean, I, I I know that we didn't have a as much life as I wanted us to have or energy when we got off the off the bus uh, at, at West Virginia. We found a way. I don't think that's going to be the case this week, just because of the respect that both programs have for for one another. Um, there's almost all the same players that were up 11 on us in the fourth quarter at their place last year. There's you know, the Plus, you had the quarterback that they didn't have last year. Um, and, and so uh, they have, obviously, our full attention of our players and, and coaches because it's a, a bunch of veteran guys on both sides of the ball that, um, um, you know, they two and five is not indicative. I mean, they're ahead in all five of those losses and have a chance to win all five of those games. Well, Willis will be back full go um, today at practice, which is good. Um, Hadley, we're still trying to decide where he's at um, and uh, the severity of his injury. Um, you know, Hadley is one of the toughest kids we have. You know, from from this state of Kansas, he's going to find some way to play. He's going to, and so we're hoping uh, as the week goes on, he gets better. Just how good is Austin Rain right now, and how, what does he mean to your run defense? Yeah, uh, Austin kind of directs all the traffic. Uh, he and Austin Moore do uh, a great job of, of getting us in the right calls and, and understanding the run game. And Coach Standard does a great job with those linebackers of knowing where their fits are at. But you still got to make tackles and make plays. And and uh, we've been saying one of the unsung heroes of our defense right now is Austin Romain. Chris, what did you like most about what your defensive secondary gave you with not just limiting their yards but creating big plays? Um, you know, we, we did a, a combination of playing – man and zone and we've been mostly a man team and we kind of switched it up and played a little bit more zone because um, we're going to need to have both moving forward uh, and I thought we broke on balls really well um, you know we uh, pass things off and communicated we're continuing to get better at communication um, and, and if we're you know if we're not on point this week with communication we're going to have a big problem because of all the misdirection and, and all the things that KU does but uh um, you know, we're playing a lot of guys back there, which is good to see. Um, the main guys are, are playing most of the snaps, but we're getting really good mileage out of a lot of uh, guys that are depth guys that, that have earned the right to play. I think a lot of folks saw Will Ancio being quite as big a contributor as he has been this season. What's allowed him to 
do what he's doing. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, one, the growth that he's made from spring to fall uh, in putting on some weight, understanding uh, our offense, uh, and then just gaining confidence. You know, uh, the fact that he's taken the lion's share of, of Lofton's reps since Lofton was uh, out with an injury has made him much more confident, much more comfortable in playing. And I know that Avery feels comfortable with him, and, and he's doing it on both ends, meaning he's doing it as a run blocker and doing it in the past, in the past game as well. So um, we're really pleased with Will, and I know that he's got a lot of confidence. You, lost, you lose a guy like Cooper and some other players who really lived to win this rivalry and were very vocal about what it meant to him. Who are some of the guys you're looking at right now who can kind of carry that torch this season? Yeah, any of those fifth- and sixth-year guys that we have, and there's a bunch of them. You know, we've, we've got captains like Hadley and, and uh, um, Austin Moore and, and stuff, but um, there's a lot of other guys. You know, Chris Tennant's been in the program for an awful long time from Mill Valley. Um, Ty Bowman's been in the program an awful long time. Taylor Poitier. There, there's just countless guys that, um, um, and, and to our fan base and to our alums, it's this is a, an important game, and um, you know we have to treat it as the next game on the schedule as far as what our preparation is Monday through Friday because you can't play this game today and you can't play it on Thursday. You you have to have a steady climb and a steady build uh, of learning what you're doing. Um, with the game plan, or if you get ahead of yourself, you're going to be in a rough spot. Don't you have some issues with the quarterback run game on Saturday? Now you get Jalen Daniels, a yep. real dual threat. What are your thoughts on that? Um, we didn't tackle well. That's the biggest thing. And, um, you know, I know that uh, Daniels is a big, a, a bigger than green and, and has, has hurt us rushing the football. I know he did in 22 hurt us um, rushing the football. I went back and watched that game yesterday. Um, so we've got to tackle better and we've got to keep leverage better. Those are the two main issues that we had um, was, you know, the fact that um, we, we were playing man and there was one guy left sometimes to make the tackle and, and Green was sometimes making that guy miss or the fact that uh, we didn't have great rush lanes and he'd sneak out. And um, so, it, no, it's a big factor, something that concerns us. Um, and um, he's a really talented kid, and, and I'm glad for him that he's healthy and gotten an opportunity to play because I know that he's missed some time. Um, terrific talent and, and obviously a real big leader on their team. Kansas has some fairly elite players on the back end of that defense. What concerns you the most? What do they do well? Uh, they go attack the ball, you know, especially those corners. Those corners have played a lot of football. That That's the thing is you look up and down the roster. There's there's guys on both sides of the ball that have played a lot of football for both teams. And um, I know how important this game is for, for both schools and for, for both uh, uh, teams. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's turning into a great rivalry. The last few years have been really competitive games. And uh, – uh, we found a way. Um, last year we were down 11 in the second half and, and found a way. Um, and uh, once again, there's so many. I watched the game in 2022, like I said yesterday, and you see a lot of the same faces and a lot of the same names. And the positive thing is you see a lot of the same guys for us too. And, and so uh, both veteran group of guys, you can throw the records out. You can do all that. It doesn't matter what anybody's done last week, a month ago, a year ago. Man, it's going to be a great football game Saturday night. Well, I take it from that. You're not going to spend a lot of time talking about you've won 15 in a row in this? No, I never have and never will. Coach, just to go back really quick, I, I counted up. I think it's roughly 3,000 miles round trip over a span of seven days, three different time zones between Boulder, Manhattan, and Morgantown. Um, do you feel a sense of normalcy now that you're back here, or is it just taking some time? It, it it'll take a little bit of time. I mean, look at how tired Lackey is, and he and he hasn't even pl he hasn't even played. Um, but um, it, it just takes a lot out of you as players, as 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 coaches, and um, you know, it's probably the benefit of us playing at night. We're going to be able to utilize that time um, and and adjust the schedule a little bit so that the guys can get a little bit of sleep because. Uh, you know, ultimately nobody's going to feel sorry for you. And ultimately come Saturday, you've got to be ready to go. But it's our job as coaches, as support staff, um, to construct a schedule and get a plan so that our guys can be as fresh as they can be on Saturday, but be mentally and physically prepared as well. I know you're obviously 6-1. and one. 
have everything still in front of you. How does that feel? Um, you know, fortunate and uh, proud of the guys for accomplishing what we've done uh, in, in four conference games, three in the road and three at night, and, and uh, that's difficult. Um, and then, uh, you know, we finally get a home game, which is exciting for our fan base, exciting for our players and families that are going to be able to come to the game. But, uh, you know, we, as True says, we really haven't done anything yet. You know, we, we really haven't done anything yet. There's teams above us uh, in, the, in the standings. There's teams that are even with us or below us that can catch us quickly. You cannot get ahead of yourself in, in this league. And now when you expand it to the amount of teams that we have and you don't play a lot of those teams, the only thing you can control is yourself, and that's what we have to do each day. That said, what do you feel like is the identity of this team right now? Um, you know, it's uh, it's a it's a toughness, it's a, it's a togetherness, it's uh, a bunch of guys that that play for K State, play for the name on the front of the jersey, a bunch of guys that have held each other accountable, um, and it's been a different guy all the time, or a different group of guys that have helped us win or help us be successful. Um, you know, guys like Simon. You know, Simon McClanahan's done a great job kicking off and punting for us, gotten better and better. Ty Bowman getting an expanded role. Jack Fabris, um, Jordan Allen on kickoff being a factor. I mean, there's so many guys that uh, that's what's fun is everybody's writing, everybody's writing their own story to collectively make us a, a good football team right now. Uh, but we got a long ways to go. After the game that – the game plan was to, to throw the ball, but any concerns also with, with Avery obviously coming off that injury? Were you being a little cautious? Um, honestly, no. Um, we really weren't. Um, we wanted to try to establish DJ, and they basically were not going to allow us to do that. And so we had had a really good plan to say if this is the way it goes – um, we're going to utilize the guys that we have, the guys that we know are really good football players at wide receiver and tight end and even our backs coming out of the backfield. And um, like I said, the, the, the maturation of, of Avery as a, as a quarterback and, and um, throwing the football and understanding and seeing defense as pre- and post-snap, has uh, he's come a long ways and he, and he feels a lot of confidence uh, with what we're doing. And so that was ended up being the plan of okay now first down now second down didn't matter we're gonna we're gonna spin it around and uh, he felt really confident we talked about it on Saturday night he was really calm and our guys made plays for him. Kansas has a few really talented running backs that they sort of rely a lot on on offense. Well, uh, because they can do everything, meaning. Uh, you can't just say we're going to try to stop the running backs because if you do, quarterback will pull the ball and beat you or they'll run option and beat you as well as you can't commit everybody up there because they're talented enough with their wide receivers, tight ends, uh, and quarterback to throw the football. So we have to do a great job of, of mixing our coverages, mixing our pressures, mis mixing some of our base defense. Um, you, you're not going to stop these guys. They're, they're too good. You, you've got to try to limit some of their success and that's even a challenge because they're one of the best teams in red zone offense too. When they get down there, they're scoring touchdowns and, and very similar to a lot of the games that we play. We cannot settle for field goals and we got to somehow uh, find a way to create a couple of field goals for them rather than give up touchdowns because they're scoring them at a, at a high rate. Uh, consistency. That's the biggest thing is just Ty's been so consistent route running, consistent as a leader, um, you know, consistent as far as knowing where he's going to be and Avery knows where he's going to be. Uh, and he's a big target that uh, I I'm so happy for Ty that, you know, he's coming into his last year and, and one of the best special teams guys K-State has ever seen, period. One of the best ones that I've had in the six years that I've been here and we've had some dynamite ones. But uh, as far as a four-core guy, as well as now getting an opportunity to not just contribute, but have an impact uh, on what we're doing offensively. Uh, I, I know that everybody uh, on that football team is excited for what uh, uh, what Ty has been able to do because he's earned it. I was going to ask you about Andrew and how he did filling in for Carver. How did you feel about that? I know it was a tough night running the ball, but yeah. it was partly them too. Yeah, uh, I thought he did a nice job. I, uh, he, Andrew's been around so long, and, and to ask that kid to play um, – all four positions, and even in the in the spring, we had him play some center. 
um, that, that that's a guy that made his first start and been here a long time. And uh, everybody in that locker room trusts Andrew Leingang, and I thought he played well. Uh, they did some things, I thought, up front uh, and with some blitzes and stunts that, that we had some problems with. But in the pass game, I, th- I don't know if Avery ever got hit. You know, there was one time on, on the fourth down where he scrambled out, but we kept him really clean, and that tells you an awful lot about the penetration of those guys to stop the run, and we were able to uh, keep him clean and so he could make some good throws. With that said, with keeping him clean, I guess I was going to ask a little bit too <laughs> prior to what you said there. Was this just in terms of how he handled things, just being calm and confident, was this maybe one of his better games? Yeah, without a doubt, um, considering he wasn't a part of the run game. Um, once again, because we didn't want him to be, we, we wanted to throw the football and, and run DJ and Dylan, uh, that um, it was one of his best games. And, and as you, the ones that were there, I was loud in that first half now. I mean, they had it cranked up. Um, and I know uh, second half it wasn't as loud, but in the, in the first half and that first drive of the third quarter when um, it was a close ball game or a one-score game, it was really loud, and he handled everything. We didn't have any of the, the false starts and those things that we, we had had a little bit before. We've got to clean up some of the dumb penalties we had on defense, and they are all they were all good calls. We've just got to clean it up, uh, and, and we'll teach some of the young guys that, that had the penalties, but uh, I, I thought – Avery had just total command of what we were doing. Finally, I wanted to ask you about Asa Newsom. This has been a interesting and harder road back for yep. him maybe than most would surmise, I guess. But how close is he to 100%? And I'd just have you comment, too, on the recovery because that <laughs> yeah. you kept momentum with that play. Yeah. Um, yeah, he he's a four-core special teams guy for us and, and uh, has played more linebacker. He played probably the most snaps he's played at linebacker. You know, he's just 12 months off of an injury, um, and he's getting more confident and playing at a high level uh, right now. And I think there's more in Asa for sure, but you're right. what He made a great play on that kick return. And, and you got to realize against Colorado, we only had one, sometimes two linebackers in the game. Never did we really have three linebackers, which – which takes a lot of reps away from you know, Austin Romaine and Asa and Rex and, and whomever else, um, you know, because of the style of, of offense we faced at Colorado. Um, and, you know, with us losing Bo Palmer, guys, Bo Palmer got hurt. Everybody, uh, I think, saw the game. Uh, Bo hurt his knee, and uh, we have lost him for the season. And I'm sick for Bo uh, because I saw it happen to him a few years ago, and he battled his butt off to get back here and play for his for his buddies. And, and he played his best game of the season last year against KU when we needed him when we were down some guys. Um, but that's going to put a lot more stress on all those linebackers to, to uh, kind of fill in the snaps we're losing with Bo. With an exception of a couple of the drives against West Virginia, how well has your defense been tackling this year? You know, up until um, that game we'd been tackling um, – consistently uh, it's never 100 percent never as good as you want it to be but we've been we've been consistent we were not good uh at byu tackling uh and we're not good in the first half uh of west virginia but in other games against really talented people um and we've been really good and 90 percent of that is knowing your angles knowing your leverage knowing where you can miss and running your feet through contact and not lunging and when we do that at a high level, we're a really good tackling team. If we stop our feet, don't run through our leverage and lunge, we're a very average team tackling. And, and our guys see the film and they see that. He's got two really good players ahead of him, but how much improvement has Joe Jackson made this season? Yeah, uh, I wish he would have gotten in the end zone. I wish they had given it to him, but uh, I wasn't going to score. There was no reason to score on that last play with the time running out. There's, that's, um, but he's playing really well. And he, he's a guy that keeps getting better. Yeah, he wants to play. He wants more carries, but he's learning from DJ. And I hope he's getting the valuable information from DJ like DJ did from Deuce. And if he does that and continues to do that and learn from him, um, you know, he's going to have a huge impact here uh, still this year, but for sure in the future. Keeping it with, with the Jacksons, Jaden has become one of Avery's most reliable yeah. targets. How, what's what's impressed you the most about how he's been able to improve? Yeah, consistency. Um, 
you know, it uh, hasn't always been easy for, for Jay Jack, um, but he's a guy that uh, um, when we believe in him, and, that's, and, and he knows that sometimes that's been a challenge for us early on uh, in his time here, but the confidence he has and the belief that we as a coaching staff have in him and the belief that the offense – does and the belief that Avery has the kid's a playmaker and uh he fights through injury too because he's been banged up um a bunch but wants to play and uh I would say it's it's kind of fun watching him because he's he's a K-Stater now and um I, I'm proud of what Jay Jack has done here and I, I like it because I see him pouring into some of the young guys that maybe are having some struggles and he's pouring into those guys like people poured into him and and it paid off for him and and uh, I appreciate him as a player but I appreciate him more as a leader right now